Hi everyone, so Samsung recently launched the successor to the Galaxy A50s, which if you remember was highly criticized for being overpriced when it launched. Now we have the Galaxy A51 replacing the A50s. I've had a few days with the A51 wherein I have developed some impressions of it and that is what I am going to be talking about in this video. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, the design of it has taken me away, like seriously. I would really like to know how Samsung hits the nail with the designs like this. This one looks like a much better version of the A50s. And this color, just wow. I am also quite impressed with the fact that the phone is so light, thin and ergonomic all at the same time. But don't be mistaken by the looks of it, it's not glass. Samsung calls it glastic, but I truly think it's plastic. The sides feel sturdy like metal, but I've not exactly been able to guess what it is. Anyways, this 3D holographic cut patterns look amazing. If you look at the back, you can see the cameras being placed in an L-shaped arrangement, which seems to be the design language the company will be following with its upcoming phones. Aesthetically, you get all the buttons on the right, while the left side of it is reserved for the SIM tray. Down below, you get a Type-C port, a speaker, and our beloved headphone jack. So yeah, I had uploaded the A50s's design in my review, and I love this one too. Another thing I absolutely love about this phone is the front of it. This 6.5 inches Super AMOLED screen is exactly what I was looking for. There's a tiny punch hole at the center of it, which by the way is smaller than the Note 10 Plus. And I like the fact that it looks almost non-existent. Anyways, the display is amazing. The colors, the contrast, those thin bezels all add to the niceties of the display. While I'm on the subject of the phone's good aspects, I would also like to mention that this phone comes with Android 10 out of the box with One UI 2.0. And having used this Android skin, it's hard to like any other. The UI is so easy to get used to and everything is just there, so easily reachable. Designed with further eased one-handed usage on Samsung's big phones in mind, I must say that I really like the changes to it from the previous version of the One UI. The transition seems so much faster and smooth as well. The layout of items has been managed differently and for good while the camera's UI has improved too. Overall, the UI looks more colorful and more managed and have always complained about One UI being slower on Samsung's budget and mid-range phones and finally, Samsung seems to have listened. But I would like to clarify that the A51 that I've gotten to use is a preliminary unit so the experience might be even better when the phone hits the store. This is because the uh, first batch of review units don't come with the final version of software installed in them. Now it's time to talk about the performance and I have literally never seen Samsung give the most compelling chipset in their budget and mid-range lineups and the story continues with the A51. You get the Exynos 9611 like on the A50s and that kind of makes me want to roll my eyes in disgust considering the A51 was supposed to be like a deserving upgrade over the A50s. Having said that, with that improved UI, you will get better performance than the A50s for sure. However, what Samsung is still pathetic at is the implementation of a faster fingerprint sensor. I really do hope they improve on this, and with haste. Now getting to the cameras, I don't want to give my final judgement based on the review unit I have, but as far as I've tested, I think the cameras are one of the best things about the device. The optimization seems to have improved and you also get a new camera UI which looks more subtle than it was. Now talking about their specs, you get the same primary lens, a 48 megapixel one, then you have an improved 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 5 megapixel depth sensor as before, and an additional 5 megapixel dedicated macro lens. The macro lens seems better than the ones from Realme or Redmi, just slightly so. I have clicked a few pictures from it and here they are. Take a look and judge for yourself. The primary lens works just as good. The colors on it are punchy and the details are on point. I clicked the samples on a clear sunny day and wow, they look absolutely amazing. What I like about Samsung devices is that they have the best optimization for skies and greenery. Again, though these images look good, they might be much better in the retail units which I will test and tell you guys in my full review. As for now, these are the wide-angle images. They are sharp and have fuller colors. 
Just like the primary lens, you get nice colors in skies and greenery. Till now, I think this is one of the best ultra-wide-angle images ever seen on a mid-range phone. Now let's get to the portraits. The A50s had good portrait imaging capability and same goes here with the A51 as well. The edge detection in portrait is fairly good. Under good lighting, you can get some truly amazing portraits like this one here. The camera does smooth in the subject's skin a little bit, but the end result, I must say, is fairly good. The 32 megapixel selfie cam works fine too. It's kind of similar to what was there on the A50s, which I had liked, and you get similar results from the A51. The software based portrait selfies don't have the best edge detection, but looks good for what it's worth. Talking about the videos, there is still no 60fps capability and stabilization is there only for 1080p videos. However, I haven't had uh, much time with it to check them very well, so I will leave that for the full review. Battery-wise, you get the same 4000mAh battery on the A51 like that of the A50s. Pair that with an energy-efficient 10nm processor and a Super AMOLED display, you get battery life that is more or less similar to the A50s which lasted me for an entire day upon moderate usage. So if I have to give my final impression on the Galaxy A51, I would like to applaud Samsung for giving such a premium looking phone at a mid-range price segment. Similarly, the display with its flagship-like punch hole and a uh, Super AMOLED panel looks very attractive. The UI has been upgraded for good and it is faster and smoother than ever. Similarly, the cameras also look very promising as far as I've tested. However, performance has never been Samsung's strongest suits. And even though the Exynos 9611 is not a bad chipset, you can get better performance in phones like the Redmi Note 8 Pro or the Realme X2. So overall, I think the Galaxy A51 is a good choice, but not the wisest when it comes to performance.